There we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick review on a whiteboard of the information that I shared with you guys at the weekend. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to let Coach Kevin in. Coach Kevin, nice and early. Oh, someone else. Olivia Williams, nice and late. Okay, so can everyone see my whiteboard? Give me a thumbs up emoji if you can see the whiteboard. There we go. Okay, perfect. So what we talked about at the weekend was goal setting. And traditionally, goal setting is not always valued enough by a student. And it's not always taught in depth enough uh, by a teacher. So we want to change that at core. We want you guys to really, really value what we're about to teach you. Not only because it's going to help you be better golfers, but it's going to help you be happier. If you can master the art of goal setting, it will change your focus and it will put your mind in a place where you can be a more relaxed, a more fulfilled human being. And that's not just on the golf course, that's in life as well. So you can apply this to all aspects um, of your life, not just your golf. So there was three components to setting a goal. If anyone can remember them, you can type them in the chat, but I'm gonna give you a clue. That's number one, that's number two, and that's number three. I don't see anything flashing up in my chat. Oh, we have a chat. Well done, Tyler, top of the class. Great job, dude. So this stands for what? What do you want to achieve? And this provides us with our outcome. The end of the goal. OK, so the what goal gives us the outcome, the very end, the objective that we're trying to obtain. So it might be I want to win a tournament. I want to shoot five under par. I want to get a grade A in my next homework. Now, the issue that we have with those kind of outcomes, scores or grades they are very low control. And as a human being, if you focus on things that you cannot control, you will be stressed. And I call myself and all the coaches um, and your parents as well, we don't want you guys to be stressed. We want you guys to enjoy uh, being young athletes and young students. So. What we want to try and do is reduce your focus on what, and we want you to channel more of your energy into how. Because how gives you the process to achieving your outcome. And if every day you spend more time focusing on how, you were going to achieve the goals, the process to getting to your goals, or the controllable steps. The things about the how and the process is it's more in your control. And as a human, if you're controlling what you can control, you will be relaxed. So every time you set foot on the golf course, we don't want you thinking about your score or the outcomes. We want you thinking about the processes, the things that you can control. Using your yardage book, planning the shot well, breath work, visualization, practice swing, having fun with the people that you're playing with, good body language, good self-talk. When you're preparing for a test, we don't want you worrying about the grade. We don't want you worrying about the outcome. We want you thinking, okay, I need to dedicate 30 minutes a night to this subject. 
And when I do this subject, every two days, I need to give myself a 10 minute quiz. That's the process to getting a good grade. And if you focus more on that area, because you can control it, you will be relaxed. Remember, you can't control the questions that you get on a quiz. You can't control if the teacher is in a good mood that day and if they're going to mark nicely or if they're going to be stressed and give you a poor mark. You can't control the answers that other people in the class give. Sometimes grades are done on a sliding scale. So much like in golf, in school, we want you to focus on the process as well. So every time we set a goal, we declare what we want, the outcome. I want to get an A in this test. We declare the process. I'm going to study for 30 minutes a night. I'm going to do a test, a 10-minute test every other day. And I'm going to get the teacher. I'm going to spend extra time after school with the teacher, getting them to review my tests. There's three processes that can help you get a grade A. And then why? We have to, every time we set a goal, we have to understand why we want it. Because why gives us our motivation. And if we're not motivated, then we're not going to be able to deal with adversity. If we're not motivated, we're not going to have grit or resilience. And if you want to be a great student, if you want to be a great golfer, probably the most important thing, along with a process focus, is grit and resilience. So we really want to tap in to what motivates us. Okay? So I want to get an A. How am I going to get an A? My processes are I'm going to study for 30 minutes a day. My phone is going to be in a different room. It's a clear 30 minutes focused. Every two days, I'm going to give myself a test. And then once a week, I'm going to go and see my teacher and get them to look at these mini tests and see if they can give me any advice. There's the processes. Now, why? Why do I want to get an A? Well, I want to get an A because I want to be a college golfer. And a college golfer needs to have good grades. So I want to go to college and play golf because I want to be part of a team. It's going to be fun and it's going to help me learn and grow as a person. I also love playing golf. I love to compete and I want to test myself at the next level. So when you think of all of those things that you want from your future, that can motivate you to engage more in the process and deal with any adversity that might come your way. Okay? So quickly stop my screen share. Now I'm going to share a different video. And the reason I show this video is because if you recall, I said to you guys, you don't have to take my word for this, right? I'm the, uh, I'm the, one of your coaches. I'm the old guy at core with uh, a strange accent um, that used to play rugby. So why would you believe me? So let's look at someone else who's followed this process and let's try and apply what I've just taught you into this video. So some of you saw this video at the weekend, some of you didn't, but I really want, whether you've seen it or not, pay close attention. What is this guy's outcome goal? Can we name four processes to get him there to that outcome goal? And can we understand his motivation? How does how motivated is he? What motivates him to deal with the adversity that he faced in life? Mr. Inky Johnson, put your hands together, guys. Every day I'm chasing something different. Every day the way I operate is totally different. And it's not about the product for me as much as it is about the process. And what I mean about the process, the process saved my life. You see, my mother had me when she was 15 years old, right? Over on the east side of Atlanta, we came up in this neighborhood by the name of Kirkwood, drug dealer on every corner, gang members in the neighborhood, two bedroom home, 14 people used to sleep on the floor. Got the opportunity to sleep in the bed one time out of the week. There was six of us in the bed, three at the foot, three at the head. 
And I came up with this dream pretty quick. I said, man, I want to go to the NFL because I had eight uncles in that house, all eight of which are still going in and out of prison. And so pretty quick, I said, man, I want to go to the NFL. So I went to my big cousin tomorrow one night. I said, man, listen, I want to go to the NFL. And so we got to work for this thing. So the thing we're going to do every night, we're going to be patient. We're going to engage in consistent action. Every night, we're going to race light pole to light pole, no shoe. So every night, we would get out in the street, race light pole to light pole. One night, a coach came down the street. He signed me and my cousins up for organized sports, right? First time being in organized sports. We get in organized sports. The thing was, after practice, everybody would need to go home. And I always had to sit on the bench and wait on my mother because she worked that way. And so when my mother would show up in the park, it would be about 10 o'clock, 10.30 at night. So I'm sitting there, and when my mother would pull up, she drove the old rear regal hubcaps off the car seats, pulling up, the car was all beat up. And she would pull up in the park 10.30 at night. I would jump off the bench. I would spin over to my mother. I would say, Mom, if you don't mind, can you please sit back in your car and turn on your car lights? I have to do some extra drills. I have to go to the NFL. She would never have to work for nothing day in the box. And I knew my mother was hot. And every night, my mother would sit back in that car, and those car lights would hit that field, and he had a seven-year-old kid doing back telling drills, running sprints, running laps, chasing his dream to go to the NFL. But just beyond those car lights, I could always connect with my mother's eyes, so it made me dig a little bit deeper, it made me push myself a little bit further, it made me work a little bit harder. It created a certain level of sweat equity in what I was doing. It created a certain level of pride in what I was doing. You know why people quit? People don't have pride in what they do. You know why people stop? They're selfish, and it's just about them. But when you have a bigger purpose to why you're doing what you're doing and you want to honor the sacrifices that others have made for you, it's nothing for you to keep going when you hear that first. If every decision and choice you make is just about you, at a certain point, you're going to hit something that's a lot tougher than you that's going to make you quit because you don't have a driving force for why you do what you do. But when I got up to the University of Tennessee, it was simple. It was simple for me to give everything I had. My freshman year, I played special teams. My sophomore season, I broke the star lineup, had a really strong sophomore season. The summer heading into my junior year, mm -hmm. I still remember the day where I was sitting in our film room and I was watching film on the California Bears. My defensive backs coach, Larry Slade, came in the room. He said, Inky, I got some good news for you. I dropped the click. I said, what is it? He said, man, you're projected top 30 draft pick, son. He said, all you have to do is play the next 10 football games. You're an automatic multimillionaire. I went out of the room. I called my mother and my grandmother on the three-way. I said, after this season, there will be no more struggle. I said, we would never miss another meal. I said, we would never experience another Christmas where we have to stand on the side of the curve and just be grateful. And I hung it up. First football game, I went out and played great, got an interception, shut Cal down. Second game, we came against Air Force, got late in the game, fourth quarter. Guy dropped back. He threw the ball to a receiver coming out of my sideline. Me and the guy, we went head on. As soon as I hit the guy, I felt as if every breath of my body left. Body went completely limp, fell to the ground, I blacked out. Never happened to me. When my eyes opened, I'll never forget, my teammates ran over. They said, hey, get up, let's go. I said, I can't. I said, I can't move. I said, what do you mean you can't move? You're on lockdown corner, man, we need you, let's go. I said, I know, man, but this time I can't move. I flipped my head up to the sky, I said, God. I said, surely nothing is happening in this moment that can alter my life. They got me over to the hospital. They took me back. They ran CAT scans. They brought me back into my room. And all in a 15-second time frame, the doctor came running in from the opposite side. He said, hey, get in there. We got to rush this guy back to emergency surgery. He's about to die. I said, what? He said, son, you have busted up the clavian artery in your chest. You're bleeding internally. We have to rush you back, take the main vein out of your left leg, plug it into your chest in order to save your life. When I opened my eyes from recovery, the same doctor was over me. He said, son, has some good news and some bad news for you. I said, you got some bad news for me? I have to tell him I was about to die. I'm still alive. How bad can it get? I'm still here. He said, the good news is we saved your life. I said, thank you, sir. He said, the bad news is, Inc., you have nerve damage in your right shoulder. I said, okay, cool. He said, but son, it's a strong possibility that you probably can never play the game of football again in your life. I said, no way. I said, no disrespect to you, Doc, but I've been working for this ever since I was seven years old. I said, no disrespect to you, Doc, but you wasn't in the park with me and my mother. And I was seven years old, and she was sending that beer. We got, she got done working at Wendy's. No disrespect to you, Doc, but you didn't come up in that two-bedroom home, 14 people sleeping on the floor. No disrespect to you, Doc, but you didn't miss those meals and stay focused and never made an excuse. I never cheated. I never cheated. Like, my conscience, still until this day, won't let me, like, I can't cheat. I can't look myself in the mirror and say, Ink, you did a good job knowing that I cheated. I can't cheat. 
one of the greatest pieces of advice that my mother gave me was this, son, whenever you start, you make sure you finish. And the problem with the world today, people get involved with things, and if they don't like a certain person, if they don't like the process, if it's not what they thought it was, they quit. And what they don't understand about quitting, quitting become, becomes a habit that doesn't just affect you. Later on in life, when you get a wife and you get some kids or you get a family, it's going to come back to hunt you, and it will one day affect them. That is why I tell you the process is more important than a product. It's not even about the outcome for me. It's about can you take pride in what you do as an individual and every night when you look in the mirror, knowing that you gave everything you had to. And we have to get to the point where we're willing to impose our will on certain things. Impose your will on My life totally changed. And they gave me an opportunity to stop. And most people, when you give them an opportunity to stop while they're chasing something, they take advantage of it because they feel as if, man, why did this have to happen to me? I felt as if, why not me? This is the perfect opportunity to use this to be a blessing to somebody else. And you know what? It's not even about me to be truthful. It's not even about me. Now it's about repaying the people that invested in me and saw something in me when I couldn't see it in myself. At a certain point in life, it can't just be about you. And the moment that we understand that and every day you wake up, we understand that life is a blessing and life is a gift. And if you were to check out today, how would you want to be remembered? It's bigger than you. Okay. Awesome video that we can learn so much from. So microphones off, microphones off, cameras on, drum roll. Okay. Just shout out the answer. What was the outcome goal? What was the end the goal? NFL. To NFL. In the NFL. What are, were the four processes that we could pick up on? Running down. Running from light pole. Light, light to pole. Good. Light pole. Um, Running light pole to light pole. What else did he do after training? Work day and night. Good. Stayed, stayed late after training, work day and night. Can we remember the other two? Can anyone think? Where was he when he got told he was going to be a draft pick? for the Watching NFL? another game. Good, yeah. Watching film on another game. Studying his craft. Okay, what else? What else did we pick up on? He never what? He never... Gave up. Never, cheated. never gave up. Never cut corners. So when Coach Kevin is on after me and he's talking to you about, you know, diet or fitness or strength, if you have an Inky Johnson type mindset, you'll listen to that information and you'll apply it and you'll never cut corners. If Kevin asks you to run in the gym, 10 meter sprint, you run 11 meters. Okay. And then why? What was his why? What did he want to do? He wanted to show his cousins that you don't have to cheat. Good, yeah. He wanted to show his family that there's a different way of life. That was going to give him a lot of pride. Okay? So as a young child, Inky Johnson developed some amazing processes. And he developed a large motivation. And then when adversity struck, when the NFL was taken away from him because of injury, because he was so used to being process focused, because he was so motivated, he was able to change his career path and still be successful. He was able to deal with the stress and deal with the adversity. So that's a good example of a what, how, why goal. I have a special guest. My wife is going to join. My wife is going to share one of her. You guys are bored of listening to me. This is my wife. Say hello, everyone. Hi. So my wife, she wants to be a photographer. That was her what goal. And then she put some processes into place. And then she has a certain motivation. So do you want to share your main process? Yeah. So I, I decided I wanted to get into photography. I'm a teacher full-time. Um, but I 
just have always been interested in it. So the first thing I did was bought a camera um, on my maternity leave. So we bought a camera and I started practicing. And then I started sending messages to photographers on um, Instagram and just said, Hey, you know, if you need any help, I'm, I would love to learn from you. I would love to help for free. And, um, and I also scheduled some zoom calls with photographers that I admired and just said, um, I'm trying to get into this. I'd love to just like talk to you and talk about how you got started. And if you have any tips and, um, everybody was so nice. Like, I think the first part to any goal is like, is speaking it out loud or writing it and kind of, and then, um, and then once you do that, it sort of starts to, things start to happen. So I messaged these people. They were all so nice. I met with probably four or five photographers on zoom or on the phone and talked to them, like I said, about how they got started. And everybody said, just start, like put yourself out there. Um, and then I started messaging people on Instagram, like I said, and then one person got back to me and said they were looking for another photographer and she would love to train me. And so now I am working with a photographer on, um, uh, in Plymouth and she's training me and we're, I have a shoot booked for Sunday actually. So, um, so it all worked out pretty well, the process and the, why the motivation that pushed you to do it. I would say the biggest motivator. So I've always been, I've been interested in it the last few years. I love to take pictures at school in my classroom. Um, but then having a baby, I really didn't, I wasn't excited to go back to work five days a week and have to be somewhere from nine to five every day. Um, and so my, my other goal is that eventually I'll have this photography business that will allow me more flexibility um, to be able to sort of make my own schedule and maybe be at home a little bit more. Beautiful. <laughs> so what goal to be a photographer, the process, go on zoom, book calls, ask for help, go on Instagram, direct message, people ask for work, the motivator, a more flexible schedule to be able to spend more time with our baby what how why okay now your guys challenge is to write your own what how why's and we started this um but some of my feedback would be the how was maybe not specific enough and the why was maybe not motivational enough and that's what we're going to work on in the next session but before coach kevin comes in in 5 minutes does anyone need any help with their what, how, why goals on this chat? If anyone has any questions, fire in the, the emoji, raise your hand emoji, and you can ask questions. If no one has any questions, I'm expecting some really good what, how, why goals on Sunday. Is that a fair deal? No questions? Okay, awesome. Remember, guys, really work on these what, how, why goals. This is a skill that will make you a better golfer, but it's also a skill that is going to make you happier and more relaxed in life. Okay? So before, I'm going to make Coach Kevin host. I don't know how to do that, so you gotta help me out there. Boom, Kevin, you are now in charge. Look at this guy. Oh, I'm no. gonna go. I'm gonna go, and I'm gonna watch the end of Glass Onion on Netflix. <laughs> right. But before cool. I go, I need everyone. I need everyone to stand up. Everyone, stand up. That's on Zoom. Stand up. Stand up. Okay, because Coach Kevin could be chilling right now eating some nice food, chilling out with his girlfriend. But he's not. He's chosen to help you guys. Okay? So, are you ready for five seconds? Microphones off. Microphones off. Uh, sorry, microphones on. My bad. My bad. Microphones <laughs> on. And we're going to give Kevin 
a good loud five second round of applause. Okay. Oh wow! Ready? Look at this. Three, two, one, let's go. For Coach Kevin, it's showing up. There we go. Okay, Kevin, I'm, I'm back coming. now. Thanks, guys. Over to you, dude. Thanks, man. Perfect. Thanks, you. All right.